Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandor Gaming, and today I want to show you the power of Gold Pride Punk Goblin Bikers post August ban list pre Lovey Lovey Rage of the Abyss. Now, my previous videos on the Lovey Lovey deck profile have been showing you post Rage of the Abyss with Leviadir and the Virtue Stream card. Now, I think those cards are going to be very, very powerful in the upcoming months. However, they're not out yet until mid to maybe early October, which is about a month away, and I kind of want to hold you guys over until then. I don't want you guys to have to wait until Rage of Abyss to start playing Gold Pride Punk Goblin Bikers, especially when the format is as what it is right now. It's very diverse, and yes, the best decks are still here, but because of the ban list, they are nerfed, so your deck is at its best chance right now to take over the metagame before all the new Azamina cards come out. So let's talk about it. So if you don't know, Gold Pride Punk Goblin Bikers is a combo wombo deck. This is a 60 card brew, and I'm really having a lot of fun with it. The Gold Pride Goblin Bikers and the Lovely Lovely Punk Monsters have great synergy as a Synchro 3, uh, well, so technically a Synchro 6, but a Rank 3, Synchro 6, Synchro 8, and Synchro 11 Fusion deck, and Synchro deck, and XYZ deck. It kind of does everything. Which is why I love it. And there's so many different ways to build it. That's kind of what I want to show you today. So uh, all throughout this month, I'm just going to show you different builds on how to play Gold Pride Punk Goblin Bikers. Because why not? We uh, You live once and the game's all about having fun. So I'm just going to be showing you different deck builds. And maybe we find out there's like one deck build to beat them all, right? If you don't experiment with your pet decks then how else are you ever going to improve them? So that's kind of what I want to do today. So in this case, the only things I've changed from the previous list that I showed you post Rage Abyss is that instead of playing our lovely, lovely Virtue Stream and of course our lovely, lovely copy of our uh, Leviate here, I'm still playing Torpedo. So if you don't know what Torpedo is, the lovely, lovely XYZ armor card that allows you to detach to draw one. Now it has zero material, so you can go into Fortress, Fortress, Detach, start to rank up, and now you have full uh, XYZ armor package comboed, which is pretty consistent, pretty good. You don't have to detach any materials using your Goblin Bikers, unlike you have to do with the Levy here for the Lovey Lovey Blackout card. Uh, so that gives us an additional draw in our combo. We are drawing three times a turn, basically, through our Lovey Lovely Extreme Session, plus our XYZ uh, Torpedo. So I figured, why not play a really, really powerful spell package? I decided to cut Gillosaurus slash Gallus, the Star Beast. Uh, that's been the level 3 extender that I've been using for the last couple of deck lists now. And I think they're both pretty solid, but they both have really bad drawbacks. Where Gillosaurus basically says, hey, non-negotiable uh, non effect, mandatory effect, you must spell summon an opponent's monster from their graveyard. If this card is better summoned from the hand, which is the only way you're supposed to summon out Gillosaurus. And then the other one, Gallus, says, hey, you have to build the top card of your deck. If it's a monster, burn your opponent and spell summon him, which has a whole bunch of drawbacks. Because if you're going first, you don't want to burn your opponent unless you're trying to go for time. But we're playing punks. So even if we burn our opponent for the max amount of damage, we're still going to be at lower life because that's all our deck does is paying life. Uh, the other issue is that we can build a very, very important combo piece that we really don't want to mill. So that can also hurt us very, very hard. And then finally, we can just completely whiff and mill a spell card. We're still playing a good, at least good 15 spells. I didn't want to mill a spell card and then be like, cool, I just discard a card from hand for free. Uh, Gillosaurus works best in like all monster decks where there's like no chance of bricking. Well, oh, that's not true. There is always a chance for breaking but what i'm saying is there's only there's no chance of breaking on a spell and on top of your deck but we're playing a good amount we're playing the one field spell we're playing the one uh, grand entrance we're playing two copies of lovely lovely uh better luck next time we're playing of course our lovely lovely cross out slash call by package and of course we're playing like five different trap cards in the main deck we're playing of course two star your engines and of course the lovely lovely xyz full armor and of course, our lovely, lovely, uh, what's it called? Dangerous Gabu. So there's a lot of cards that we potentially mill that we don't want to. So that's why I'm going to decide why not play it as a power spell to just push for game, which is really, really fun. So I went with ultimately 
the DPE package because why not? We have an extra five slots in the main deck. Why not just put out a really, really powerful boss monster as well as everything else your deck can do? So that's kind of what I did. So all I did was take out Gallus for the three copies of uh, Fusion Destiny. And I think I took out your Effect Veiler or Mold Chummy as my cross out target. Uh, basically, I was like, well, Mold Chummy is a little too expensive. I'm not going to real life have it unless you want to. It's like a $40, $50 card. And it's only going to get power creep as soon as the next set comes out. But whatever, you can have it if you want. Uh, as for the other one, uh, Effect Veiler is good and all, but there's way more powerful hand traps you want to worry about. And you're basically crossing out those anyway. So that's basically the idea there. Uh, that's really all that's changed. I just want to add a DPE package because why not? If you want to open some powerful spells, you can. If you want to build this deck to be a, like a Furion build, you absolutely can. If you want to play more Whitewoods Synchros and more Whitewoods Monsters, you can. Shit, you want to play the Runic cards? You can. You want to play the uh, Lovely Lovely Furions? You can. You can build this deck however you want. You want to play the Exodia cards? You can. If you want to play the Horus Engine, you can. If you want to play the Phineas Myths? You can. That's kind of what this whole deck list is just trying to emphasize to you for the next month. You can build this deck however you want. The Gold Pride, Punk, and Goblin Biker ratios don't really ever change. And the deck is super consistent and super like combo wombo stop me now or I'm just going to make a board to the heavens. That's kind of what this deck does. It just climbs its way up to heaven and it says, hey, you got to pull me down from here. A very, very fun deck. Super consistent. Any two little threes is full combo. So you have plenty of spice to play a whole bunch of non-engine cards. Just to completely wipe out your opponent's game plan. And why not play the DBE engine? It's just really, really cool. Phoenix of Forces does a quick effect non-targeting pop every turn. And he just also gives a lore of 400 attack the uh, deduction to your opponent every turn which is pretty fun so that's really all i want to say about this list i just want to try out the dpe engine it's kind of like a forgotten fusion monster that everyone's kind of disregarded and uh, i was like why not no one else is playing it anymore i mean this is one of those forgotten engines that everyone used to jam last year everyone went back when verte was back in legal but ever since verte is no longer legal no one's been playing DPE unless you're a hero player. And even then, some hero players don't even play the package. And it's like, we'll just hard make it using Mali instead of actually going with the Destiny Fusion package. Which is cool and all, but I like Destiny Fusion. It's a really, really powerful card. The only issue is you gotta do your full combo first. That's really all that it takes. So, yeah, that's really about it. I hope you all enjoy. Build Gold Pride Punk Gauntlet Biker however you want it. And uh, literally, the, uh, the ceiling is up to you. You want to build it up to the heavens, you can. So don't be afraid to reach out for the stars, take hold, and do the best you can because this deck is super fun and it's super creative. You can fusion, synchro, and XYZ on you and your opponent's turn to make some really, really creative end boards that your opponent's not going to know a single thing what to do. So like and subscribe for more content. Take care. And see y'all next one. Bye-bye.